here at Buzz TV. Fun night. I'm here with Carlos of the B-Side Players. Yes. How are you doing tonight, Carlos? Good, awesome. You know, I'm seeing down here on this thing that it says 20 year anniversary tour, right. correct? Yeah, 2014, we've been celebrating our 20th year as a band. We started back in uh, 1994, so. Well, we like it. This is our 100th episode, so it's uh, pretty apropos. That's awesome. 20 years, that's a long time to be together. It's a long time, a lot of work, a lot of sacrifice, but we're still alive, we're still making music, and i um, very, very blessed. And you're here in Vegas, so we love that. We're in Vegas tonight, yes. We pushing a new product this time around? Um, we got some like a uh, solo uh, kind of um, like a cumbia vinyl record release out and uh, we're still, uh, we got some stuff in the works. We got some singles that are out right now in the, in the, on the internet. So we're always having new, new music, new recordings out. Where can I find the vinyl? The vinyl is here, it's at our live shows. Is that the only place to get them? Can we get them online for those uh, guys watching? If they yeah, wanted to pick it up, strictly, where are they going to get it? It's strictly for, for like people that come support us live. Oh, then I'm going to have to pick up a couple of copies and uh, might be the first lucky one that hits me up. We'll be sending one your way. Yes. I'll definitely do that. Let's do that. So tell us about the band. I see, you know, I love it. I see there's a horn section in it. Mm -hmm. You were telling me, what, seven piece, nine piece? We got a nine piece tonight. Um, a nine piece, uh, three piece horn section, percussion. Um, there's, we have some players from Mexico, from Monterrey, from uh, Mazatlán, Sinaloa, from Tijuana, Tecate. So it's, we're doing the whole world music representing Mexico and um, the border, San Diego. Very nice. We're excited to see this. Now I'm looking at the tour dates. You guys are actually bopping around to a lot of places. We've been doing a lot of shows this year. We did a whole cross country tour um, two months ago. Um, we went for all the way from San Diego to Key West, Florida, and then up the East Coast and back, doing some festivals. And and um, right now we're we're just gonna do like a little ski resort run, and then head back to uh, California and do, and just finish off the year on the West Coast. And then hopefully get in, do some recording, and maybe find. Uh... Definitely, definitely, always recording, and that's that's how I have fun. Actually, that's the funnest thing about being a musician is going in the studio. Now with 20 years. You've been around, you've seen the music scene up, down, in and out, especially where it's kind of in a weird place now. Right. Have you guys, as a band, you know, uh, thought of maybe doing something outside the box to create a new revenue stream or something different than other people are doing? Here, here's the point. I saw something on the internet and I actually went and spent the dollar where, uh, I think it was the bass player from a band, and we'll be talking to them soon, yeah. so we'll plug them later. Um, is selling their new album for a dollar online digital download a dollar and he goes our goal is to sell a million units I saw that clicked it popped a buck down thought it was a brilliant move today outside of the box I mean amazing because kids will spend a, a buck right. bucks easy to get right. so you know I'm always looking at it and telling people today it's we have to think outside of the box I was wondering right. if you guys are doing anything like that that's a great idea because you can, you can at the end say you sold a million units, right? It doesn't matter how much, how much it costs, but it, <laughs> it really doesn't matter because again, and a digital download costs you nothing, so your cost is nothing. The right. dollar's all profit. Yeah. You I know, mean, these days I think music should, music should be free. You know, like as far as what's going on with the whole music business, but. Uh, when you're a touring band, it's important to have a merchandise to keep, you know, to help you pay for costs for, for tour expenses because, you know, as a, being a nine-piece band, we definitely have to sell merch and, and we have to put a price on our music because that really helps us out on the, on the road. Oh, you have to eat. Yeah. You know, nine people do eat. Yeah, but we would love to give away our music. It's just... You know, as far as a, when you're, we're a touring band and that's how we make our, our money, we have to like have our, our, our merchandise available at, for, for costs. Yeah, see, we're doing a project I really can't get into. It's something we're calling Project X at the moment. I'm working with a band called Adelius Way. Something we're doing outside the box a little right. bit. I'll talk to you off camera about yeah. it. Um, awesome. But it's another way to generate some kind of a revenue stream right. above and beyond this. And again, with this day, you're seeing it. Now, what advice might you have for the young cats that are just coming up 
maybe a band that's good enough to maybe take that supporting role on the road. What right. advice would you give them? Would it be chase maybe a label, uh, try to do the indie deal and, and do it yourself? My advice would just be to just hit local hard and then once once you get your music together and your live show together, is start going outside of the border towns and then when you're really ready you pick up an agent before a record label or anything else a booking agent someone that's gonna give you dates out there and and maybe have you open up for a big act because that's that's basically what we did in the beginning was just open up for huge acts and just tour across the country and that kind of just you know helped us out to do create to start doing our own tours and speaking of this, how did this whole thing come to be 20 years ago? Just time flies when you're having fun. That's, you but know. I mean, how did the whole band come together 20 years ago? I know I was a young kid. We're all younger 20 years ago. How did the whole thing start? Was it just having fun? Was it a, a vision of purpose? We want to have a band that actually plays out there? I think it was just about like expressing ourselves and having fun and just having like a playing a a style of music that nobody else was doing at the time and just being creative and and from there just just kind of you know make just making fans and and having the people dance and just just create like a fun show that that we've been doing it for 20 years now and it's just it's just making people have a good time make, giving people good music to dance to and and that's just basically like the number one the number one job for us is, is to make people dance and make people move and, and feel good about themselves. You definitely do that. I mean, we love the grooves. You guys are going to see that real soon here. <laughs> so we love that. Um, I guess a couple quick things. Yeah. Before I wrap it up, is there anything we might have left out about the B-side players that they need to know? Well, first off, where do we find you? Well, you can find us at www.thebsideplayers.com and then also our Facebook and Instagram and Twitter page but we're always traveling we're always coming to a town near you so you know that's the most important thing is to keep updated with our tour touring dates on our website and uh, we're a touring band that's what we do and we like to go deliver the music to the people now that's a great thing you know it's it's a band that loves to play that's out there all the time that's not phoning it in so we love that about you. So I guess before we end, we'd like to do a, a, a little thing. We have a game called uh, Roll the Bones. Mm -hmm. We have 20 sided dice. We have 20 random questions. I think three or four might actually have to do with music. You up for taking a spin? Let's do it. Roll the Bones. Yeah, we did this with the band uh, month, uh, about a month ago. They had so much fun. They just kept playing. No, we want to play some more. Go again, go again. I was like, hey, we're running out of questions, guys. So. I'll give you the dice. Let's do this. And I'll let you start. You roll it on there? Roll it on there. Let's see what this number is in the dark. Crap out. 18. 18. 18. If you could erase one U.S. state, what would it be? If I could erase one U.S. state? Yeah, is there a state that you like least than others? Oh, man, it would have... I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I would have to say Arizona just because <laughs> of the whole immigration, of the way that they pull us over all the time and make us unload our trailer and... And it's just yeah. hell. Yeah. What's funny is I've rolled and gotten that question, and my answer was Arizona. <laughs> and I've always say it's not the people in Arizona, because the people in Arizona are great. Right. It's other entities in Arizona oh, I yeah. don't like, and that ruins it for everyone. That's so I'll uh, play, because I figure, how can I ask you a question and then not <laughs> get it involved? And this is a nine. And nine is religion, yes or no? I'm going with no. I do not religion. believe, myself, I don't believe in organized religion. I believe in karma. I believe in do the right thing, but an or organized thing. Personally, I believe no. If you believe yes, more power to you, but that's just me. Spirituality, yes. Religion, no. Exactly. Well, other than that, I think it's time to wrap it up. Let you guys get ready for this insane yeah. show we're going to see here real soon. 
So for myself, for you, for the B-side players, we are out of here. Nice. I appreciate Thank everything, you. my friend. Thank you, Thank you guys. See ya. <laughs>
Feliz cumpleaños para Lucía. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy yeah, birthday. Yeah. Alright, this is a little reggae song called Crossroads right here. And thank you guys for being here tonight. Much love all around.